From nods to old comic installments to a mysterious villain who may or may not be an alternate version of a major protagonist, here's everything you missed in the Deadpool 3 trailer. The first teaser trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine doesn't open on a big action scene, but in Wade Wilson's apartment and a quiet moment among friends. It's Wade's birthday, and many of his mutant mates are present, as well as his more ordinary pals like Dopinder. But one curious friend shown at the party is someone who shouldn't be there, Shatterstar. My name's Rusty, but I go by Shatterstar. That's, That's good. good. Yeah, yeah. Rusty is... Terrible. Played by Lewis Tan in Deadpool 2, Shatterstar was a member of Wade's newly formed X-Force team, which also included Domino, Bedlam, Vanisher, and Peter. But during the team's first mission, nearly every member of the group is killed, including Shatterstar. Seeing Shatterstar back, once again played by Tan in Deadpool and Wolverine, doesn't mean he's come back to life. Although it could. At the end of Deadpool 2, the Merc with the Mouth uses a time travel device to alter the past. He saves Peter during their disastrous mission, so it's possible he saves Shatterstar too. Given the presence of the TVA, there's also a chance that the opening moment of the trailer actually takes place in an alternate timeline. This would beg the question, is this an alternate version of Deadpool? It's certainly possible, but considering how Wade is immediately confronted by TVA agents, it could be that this is our Deadpool, but in a different universe. When we meet Wade Wilson in the first Deadpool film, we learn that he was a highly trained mercenary. With uncanny reflexes and a crack shot with a gun, he's the perfect killer, made all the more deadly when he's given a super-powered healing factor. But in the trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine, we find that Wade Wilson is living a more ordinary life, in one reality or another. But he's chosen a very different profession to use his skills. In a brief shot, we see Wade in front of a set of lockers. As he wistfully peers into an open locker revealing his Deadpool outfit, we get a look at Wade out of costume he's wearing a very different kind of uniform. He even has a name tag that appears to read Sales Consultant. This could mean that at some point, Wade gave up the life of being a killer and a hero and settled down, getting a regular job and living a more ordinary life. Clearly though, something prompts him to come out of retirement and put the Deadpool suit back on. And it sounds like it might be the TVA who convinces him to do it. The biggest reveal of the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, of course, is the presence of the Time Variance Authority, which have been rumored for quite some time. Seen in both seasons of Loki, their participation in the Deadpool sequel suggests we may indeed see a lot more of them in the MCU. But for now, it looks like it's up to Wade Wilson to deal with them. When the TVA grabs him, the lead agent gives Wade a lowdown on the wider multiverse, with a series of TV screens that show clips from various Marvel movies. First, we see clips from the opening action sequel in Avengers Age of Ultron. We also get a glimpse of the finale of Thor Ragnarok as Chris Hemsworth's Thor, with a missing eye, prepares to confront Hela's army. In the next scene, the images show clips from Captain America the Winter Soldier. This includes Cap's fight with Batroc the Leaper. The final screen in the scene shows a close-up of Captain America from the end fight sequence with the Winter Soldier himself. Clips from MCU movies past aren't the only thing we get a look at when the TVA gives Wade a brief on the multiverse. A number of other screens flash various graphics, charts, and statistical data. But a closer look and a click of the pause button will reveal another screen with a fairly eye-opening image. Because if we're seeing it right, it looks like a shot of Deadpool in a suit and tie, as he accepts the Emmy for Welcome to Wrexham. The documentary series follows the Wrexham AFC, which is owned by Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. In 2024, it picked up five primetime Emmys, leading to Deadpool to step in for Reynolds in a faux acceptance speech. Mr. Lively couldn't be here to accept this broken Emmy, so he sent me on his behalf. Does this mean the TVA is keeping tabs on the real world too? Maybe, or maybe it's just a tongue-in-cheek nod to the fact that the video in question puts a call out to the Oscars to nominate Deadpool and Wolverine. Lastly, the Oscars. You're on notice, mother Maybe we can get a token VFX nod next year. Using a video asking for an Oscar in the movie the video asked for an Oscar for? Typical Deadpool. Throughout the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, we get repeated looks at Wade Wilson fighting TVA agents in a snowy forest. There are two schools of thought about those scenes. On one hand, it could be the forest location where Wolverine took his last breath in Logan, with an added dusting of snow. 
The downed tree and overturned six-wheel truck more or less match, and it would be a likely place for Deadpool to visit if he's looking for Wolverine. On the other hand, some fans think it could be the site of the opening battle in Avengers Age of Ultron. It's a bunch of snow and pine trees, so it's hard to say for sure. But that would also make sense, since it's the same place shown on the TVA screen earlier in the trailer. But what would Deadpool be doing in a scene from Age of Ultron? He did call himself the savior of Marvel, so maybe he's trying to improve older entries in Marvel's movie catalog. Cleaning up the timelines. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine is that it doesn't reveal the identity of the movie's main villain. We do get a quick look from behind it who appears to be the big bad, but there's no telling who it actually is. We can, however, make some educated guesses. In 2023, actor Emma Corrin acknowledged that she'd be playing the movie's villain, but stopped short of saying who that is. So far, all talk has centered on the possibility that Corrin is playing Cassandra Nova. In the comics, Nova is a twin of sorts of Professor X, a woman born on the astral plane who used Xavier's DNA to fashion herself a body. In the trailer, the reverse shot of the villain confirms that the character is bald, and the high collar is reminiscent of Nova's comic book outfit, lending real credence to those rumors. Of course, there's another villain in the trailer who remains a mystery, a man shrouded in post-apocalyptic attire seen wielding some serious weaponry. There's no mention of his identity. But there is one possibility that leaps out at us. It's Deadpool himself from an alternate timeline, out to destroy the MCU. And if that's the case, it would confirm long-standing fan theories that the film was inspired by the one-shot comic book Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Ha-ha! <laughs> nice! While Wade is expounding on his excitement over joining the MCU, saying that his entrance is going to change things forever, we see him walking through a high-class casino. As he strolls forward, we get a look at a poker table at the end of the room, with one very important person in a white suit at the head of the table. Seen from behind, the profile of the man's hair tells us that this is obviously Logan. However, comic fans might suggest that this is a very specific iteration of him, Patch. Introduced in the late 1980s, Patch is an undercover version of Wolverine who traded in his usual costume for a suit and an eye patch during a time period when most of the X-Men were either in hiding or assumed to be dead. It's hard to tell at this point if Deadpool and Wolverine will feature any plot points from this series, but it's a fun nod to Marvel history either way. It was in 2017 that Disney announced their deal to acquire 20th Century Fox, the movie studio responsible for the first two Deadpool films. There was plenty of worry at the time that Disney, or Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige, wouldn't allow the R-rated Deadpool series to be integrated into the MCU. But Ryan Reynolds put that to bed long ago. Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. Of course, it's to be expected that Deadpool will be making plenty of fourth wall breaking cracks about the Disney acquisition of Fox and fan fears of his franchise being watered down. However, one thing we definitely didn't expect was a large, elaborate action set piece involving a recreation of the 20th century Fox logo. In more than one moment in the trailer, we see Deadpool battling villains off screen in front of a massive stone version of the Fox logo, buried as if it had been left to rot for decades. What's happened to it and why it even exists is anyone's guess, but given the meta nature of the character, we wouldn't even be surprised to learn that the film's villain is somehow responsible for merging the two studios and getting Wade into the MCU. If you pay attention, there are some familiar elements in the Deadpool 3 trailer that call back to older MCU adventures. In addition to the snowy Sokovian forest from Age of Ultron where Hydra was headquartered, we're also shown what appears to be Hydra vehicles from Captain America, the first Avenger. In one key moment, Deadpool and a TVA agent are facing off against some unidentified goons. But if you look closely, it appears that one of the henchmen is using a futuristic rifle that looks suspiciously similar to the ones provided to Hydra soldiers by the Red skull. Also visible in the scene appear to be some advanced Hydra motorcycles and the futuristic tank scene in Captain America, the first Avenger. In 2023, behind-the-scenes leaks hinted at the presence of Hydra and even the Red Skull being in the Deadpool sequel. However, the fact that the trailer seems to show us two key Hydra locations from two distinct time periods may suggest that the evil organization is a bigger part of the film than anyone expected. 
Though unconfirmed, people have long speculated that this latest Deadpool installment would be a multiverse hopping adventure, leading many to wonder if we'll get any cameos from old Marvel movies. Fans are hoping for appearances from the likes of Wesley Snipes' Blade or Ben Affleck's Daredevil. But the only real cameo we've got so far is from a previous X-Men movie, Aaron Stanford, presumably reprising his role as Pyro from X2, X-Men United, and X-Men 3 The Last Stand. Interestingly, Stanford is the only antagonist who actually gets a line of dialogue in the trailer. God, I love this part. In X2, Pyro was more of a reluctant villain, a student at Xavier's school who joins with Magneto after a government crackdown on mutants. In the sequel, he went full tilt baddie, and if this is the same Pyro, it seems that he hasn't changed his ways. Whether his role is more than a glorified Easter egg is anyone's guess, but right now he's the only multiversal cameo so far to be confirmed. The best shot we get of one of the movie's villains is towards the end, when we see a Mad Max sort of baddie standing atop of a Hydra tank and activating a large weapon. In that same scene, several details in the background provide clues to the film's story. First is the presence of what appears to be San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. A pivotal location in the X-Men films, the Golden Gate Bridge was destroyed by Magneto in X-Men 3 – The Last Stand. He tore it from its roots in the San Francisco Bay and used it to create a walkway to Alcatraz Island. The bridge in the trailer seems to be destroyed and the California landscape seems to be a post-apocalyptic wasteland, possibly suggesting that this scene takes place in the same universe as The Last Stand. But what makes it really strange is what's in front of the bridge. Behind the villain, half buried in the sand, looks like the remains of a Chitauri Leviathan. These flying alien beasts were part of the Battle of New York and the Avengers, and their remains were used to create advanced weaponry for S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Vulture. So it would seem the villain may be collecting advanced tech from the history of the MCU to build some kind of doomsday weapon. The first decade of stories in the MCU culminated in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, an epic two-part saga that changed the face of superhero films forever. Is that everyone? But you wanted more? Now, Deadpool himself seems to be teasing the next big Marvel movie event in the trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine, with an easter egg in the final shot. It can be seen when Wade is lying in the desert and the shadow of Wolverine looms above him. Off to Deadpool's right, laying conspicuously on the ground face up, is an issue of the Marvel Comics event series Secret Wars. This is no coincidence. Marvel has already announced that the comic is being adapted into another two-part story, beginning in 2026 with Avengers 5 and concluding in Avengers Secret Wars a year later. With fans hoping that both Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds could return for one or both of those movies, the presence of the comic feels like serious foreshadowing.